1915, the North Carolina State Legislature enacted the North Carolina Credit Union Act, permitting the establishment of credit unions within the state. Nearly 20 years later, in 1934, the Federal Credit Union Act was signed into U.S. law by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. In the period that followed, between 1939 and 1944, three African-American credit unions, all with contemporary ties to self-help credit union, were founded in eastern North Carolina. Like many of its kind at that time, St. Luke Credit Union was founded out of necessity. The original story was uh, some of the farmers in the neighborhood needed to secure monies to get uh, fertilizer and stuff, and they were denied. And this is the way I've heard the story. And they were denied, and then a group of them decided, let's do something that we can help one another. So they got uh, gentlemen from different neighborhoods, uh, and they got together and formed uh, a club. And once the club was organized, then they transferred it over into the credit union, and they were chartered here in 1944. The here that Mr. Sutton refers to is this weathered and worn historic structure, an original Rosenwald School built in the early 20th century for the education of African-American children, and the first home of St. Luke Credit Union. It's a place of immense pride and cherished memories for the 82-year-old Sutton. My parents were one of the uh, original uh, chartered members. My mother was very interested in her children, you know, saving a penny, so she put us in right away. Well, what happened, I was a seed selling man, and I, I had seeds. I was selling a little boy running around the community, selling seeds for uh, gardening and fruit trees and whatever. So I had that little dime coming in. I'd run up to the credit union and put it in there. And that's how I first began. So I've been in ever since. In 1959, St. Luke Credit Union moved from the schoolhouse on the outskirts of town to a location inside of Windsor city limits. For decades thereafter, members continued to support each other and help themselves by funding the purchase of new homes for African-American families and by financing African-American businesses. One man, who not only remembers the early financial lessons taught by St. Luke Credit Union's founding leaders, but also puts them into practice, is 93-year-old Timothy Baysmore. Uh, a man, Mr. Mountain, he was a school teacher down at St. Luke School. And he helped start the credit union. And he, he, he would tell us about saving, borrowing, lending, we learned from it. I think it taught us a lesson. It taught us how to save. Taught us how to how, how to be businessmen. And that was one of his purposes, to try to learn what to do with money, and how to borrow money, and how to pay money back. And I I I gained a lot of knowledge. After running a sewing factory for 25 years. Mr. Baysmore found success in real estate with loans first from St. Luke Credit Union and later from Self-Help Credit Union. I've been successful enough to pay Thank you. my bills. St. Luke loaned me enough money to buy some lots on the edge of this field. And later, Self-Help loaned me some money <laughs> to buy this land. And I, I decided that I didn't need to run a sewing factory any longer, so I tried to develop this land. Opportunity, he says, that was denied to African Americans by the banks. <laughs> the opportunity 
were different. White could go in the bank and get money, but blacks couldn't. They, they, they would deny you. <clears throat> they would loan you money to buy a car sometime, but not to buy land. They wouldn't buy lots or land. Banks just didn't do it. I guess that was a policy. And we had, we had to accept that. With credit union help and his own vision and determination, today Mr. Baysmore's holdings include 100 acres of land, 74 mobile home units, and an antique automobile that's actually a few years younger than its owner. His son also has turned the family's former sewing factory into a black-owned and operated ambulance service. In 2006, St. Luke Credit Union merged with Durham-based Generations Community Credit Union. Generations, as it was commonly known, sought to unite many of North Carolina's African-American credit unions under one roof. Uh, Generations took 10 uh, credit unions and merged them into one. Uh, 10 uh, credit unions that were failing, that were beyond struggling. Some of these were on life support. The goal was collective long-term fiscal sustainability in the face of persistent socioeconomic pressures, a condition that had been threatening the survival of African-American credit unions and communities since their founding. Well, you know, it's, it's harder um, in rural North Carolina, period. I mean, so in urban areas, uh, it's relatively easy to have success uh, because there's so many resources. And you're resource rich. Um, you can roll out a bid to have success in Durham and in Raleigh and in Charlotte because uh, there's so many resources. But in these small communities, the resource poor communities, it's not true. Um, and they have far less to work with. Uh, so it's harder, whether it's education, uh, whether it's lending, whatever it is, you have far fewer resources to work with. It makes it much more challenging. So at one point, there were um, an upwards of 30 credit unions that were minority controlled credit unions in North Carolina. Now there's two. Still today, against the odds, a branch of St. Luke Credit Union carries forward that founding mission of service to the African-American community by continuing to operate in Windsor. And now it does so as a branch of Self-Help Credit Union. <laughs>